Josh here from Inside Wrestling Truth, and today I have a very special guest and a legend of pro wrestling, the wild-eyed southern boy, Tracy Smothers. Tracy, thanks for coming to doing this interview with me today, man. Appreciate thanks it. Thanks for having me, Josh. First question is, how did you get into the pro wrestling business? Uh, I grew up watching it as a kid, and uh, the old, uh, well, it wasn't called USWA then. CWA, Jerry Jarrett, Jerry Lawler, all that Nick Lewis. And, uh, I got in school, high school. I uh, used to see a lot of wrestlers at the gym I worked out at. And then went to college a couple years and met Steve Kerr and Stan Lane. They trained me. And after that, Tojo Yamamoto trained me. Uh, and I had a lot of help from Bob Armstrong. And I, I, I grew up watching it. What were your earliest memories of working in the Evansville Coliseum? Uh, the first time I worked in this Coliseum was 1983. Um, you know, Bill Dundee, Jerry Lawler, Dutch Mantel, Jerry Jerry, of course, you know. Uh, uh, you know, those guys were, 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 were it, you know. And uh, you do Memphis on Mondays, every Monday night. You do Louisville every Tuesday night. Louisville Gardens, Memphis, Smith, South Coliseum. Evansville every Wednesday. Thursday would be uh, either a town up in Kentucky somewhere, you know, could be anywhere in Kentucky, uh, or down around Memphis. Friday, either up in this end or down toward Nashville Way, or uh, uh, down around Memphis. Saturday morning Memphis TV, Saturday night Nashville. Uh, every Saturday night, you know, every Saturday morning Memphis TV. All the Saturday, uh, Nights Nashville, the first three Saturdays of the month, and then the last Saturday of the month, you always be John Pearl working, so, you know, you do, you do that. It's still kind of believe. Jackson, Tennessee, once a month. So, talk a little bit about going to WCW. Uh, how did you get hired there? How did that come about? Um, in 87, Steve Armstrong and I uh, were in the Florida, Old Florida Championship Wrestling. Mike Graham owned it, Scuba Matsuda, and uh, then they sold out, and Dusty Union came in, Jim Crockett, NWA, and uh, well, in Florida's always NWA, and we wrestled the Midnight Express a few times, and uh, uh, it went good with Bobby Eaton, Stan Lane, uh, in St. Petersburg, Florida, and then we came up to Baltimore, Maryland, and wrestled, and I was in the ring with them, and it went great, you know, they were, they were fantastic. And, uh, well, three years later, I did Continental Championship Wrestling at Florida, uh, 87, and then back to Tennessee for the event of Continental down based in Alabama, and uh, Birmingham, and it was there, uh, on and off two years, come in and out back to Tennessee, this area, and uh, uh, Jim Cornette, and Kevin Sullivan, Eddie Gilbert, Jody Hamilton, all helped us get in WCW. We got a trial, and they hired us. You know, I said two and a half years. To, you know, uh, that's that's how we got in. Just these guys. What were some of your favorite teams to work with while you were in WCW? Oh, there's a lot of them, really. Uh, the United Express, of course, the Three Birds. Learned a lot from all of those guys. Really did. Uh, Jim Cornette, Bobby Eaton back in was just out of this world. Stan Lane was a gimmick. And, and, you know, he helped train me. And uh, you know, I knew how to get over it. And I had a lot of charisma. And uh, Michael Hayes, Jimmy Garvin, just were on the gods from me. We worked with them two different times, about a year each. Well, not a year, well, close to it. You know what I mean? You know, as the Young Pistols, as the White House Southern Boys, and, and all that. Mm -hmm. and so to, they they had such great you know psychology and minds. All of those guys for the business. And uh, you know, you, you could never go wrong. Yeah. All right, you couldn't go. You couldn't go wrong. Yeah. Great minds were there. Still are. How did your time in uh, WCW end? And did you have heat with anybody when you left there? I don't think so. I mean, I was there two and a half years. The first year and a half I, uh, was on a verbal, you know, verbal commitment and the salary weekly. No matter what how many times we're we get bonus for the first set of pay per views for a while. Uh, the last year I was on contract when Bill Watts came in 
and cut expenses, and, and a lot of guys got released when the contract was up, and I, I was one of them. Uh, so, you know, there were a lot of guys who did, you know, like I said, when the guys' contracts were up, they didn't have any money, and a lot of guys uh, were gone. Yeah. So that's just part of it that happens, you know. I worked for Bill Watts in 86, uh, the year of 86, and for Mid South Wrestling. That was my first full time job in the business. I started in 83 for the Jarrett's. Yeah. 83 to 86, and Bill Watts in uh, Tennessee and Florida and Continental. And, you know, we did Mexico a couple of trips. I did four tours to Japan from 88 to uh, 1990, New Japan Pro Wrestling. Go ahead. Um, what's your thoughts on Jim Cornette, and what was your time like in Smoky Mountain? Oh, well, um, I was ready. When I got released in 92, uh, I, I was ready to get out of business and, and try to go coach football mm -hmm. and wrestling. You know, that's my off where I was originally from. And uh, but during the year about of 92, he had, Jimmy had left. He, he called me about once a month and just, you know, and, and said he was working on something. Or I'll see him around. You know, just keep coming by shows, so I'm here and there. And if it wasn't for him, I would have probably got out of the business in '92. So I owe him a lot. Yeah. Thank you, Jimmy. <laughs> but I, I learned a lot. I learned how to do uh, interviews. He taught me how to do interviews. Him and Bob Armstrong. And, uh, and talk. And so, like a lot of the matches with Midnight Express, he, he would lay them out. You know, mm -hmm. Bobby would stand, Steve, and I'd just follow all of those guys. You know. <laughs> But uh, he's got such a dedicated, good mind to the business. And, uh, he's crazy. He's just seven foot, three hundred pounds. He let Tim Trunks go off, which we all would. You know, uh, he, he has one of the best minds. And one of the, I mean, there's several of them that do. But boy, he's in there. Yeah. He's a student of the game, like you wouldn't believe. Um, tell us about getting the call to go to the WWE. Well, that Jim Cornette, uh, Jim Cornette got, got me in there in, uh, in 1996, and uh, yeah, he's, he's, he's a, him and Bruce Pritchard, who was like president or vice president of the time, that's what I was just so, mainly, you know, Jimmy's the one picked the bug. In. Right. What were your first impressions of Vince McMahon? Well, he's a very smart man. I mean, brilliant man. I mean, you know, he's a promoter. He's he knows how. To look what he's look what their operation is. You know, that's come to. I mean, it's it's amazing. You know, I mean, uh, I mean, I guess they've had some problems in the stock market lately. But uh, he, he's a fighter. He's a smart guy. He don't stop. I mean, he's on it. You know what I mean? Yeah. He'll fix it. Whatever the problem is. And, he don't like the whole world knowing it, you know. Um, that's, uh, that's the economy, that's America nowadays. He'll take a gamble, he's not scared. Yeah. He took a gamble in the first WrestleMania. Mm -hmm. and, uh, you know, and he threw all the, he put all the, the, the how do you say, all the eggs in a basket and at WrestleMania 3 2. Uh, so, uh, he, he went in and shut, shut all the other territories down, got their TVs, stole all the top guys, and just took the whole thing over. You know, just bum rushed the business. <laughs> Hulk, you know, getting big, going right. nationwide, and with hotter than a firecracker. I was the first to get started. And, 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 um, I've been yeah. in this about a year. So, you know, what can you say? He's a marketing genius. So, yeah. Did you feel there was any certain guys there that were trying to hold you down while you were in the WWE? Well, uh, several, you know, were holding a lot of people down back in, uh, but uh, they had, you know, uh, that's just the nature of the beast, the sharks, as you can call it. Uh, you know, uh, uh, Shawn Michaels didn't like it. I mean, he, back then, boy, he was real cool, you know. I've heard that. Uh, Triple H liked me. I, I did the ring him a few times. I thought he was always cool to me. But he was just getting back, uh, to get, getting pushed again after the thing happened quick. With the Mac. When they, that yeah. thing in, you remember that? New York. That's before yeah. I started there with Diesel and Razor and Sean. Okay. Triple H. Well, yeah. They were leaving. Sean was you know, on top. And Hunter was kind of 
Gabe Gold, I think, head coach here. Vince always liked him. It, and I'll say this, and I'm not saying this to kiss his ass, but Vince always loved Hunter. Hunter would probably been in a position he was in if he stepped into Vince didn't have a dollar. Because Vince always liked him, always liked his little bit. It was always way before they had a lot of guys that I, I would say I'm in the know that had, uh, you know, they could tell you that. You know, Vince always liked him. Sean, too, of course. You know, Undertaker. You know. I think Undertaker had a kind of a problem with guys that he knew when he started, and I was one of them. And it seemed like I think Vince had a problem with that. I ain't talking about mine. I'm just telling you. Yeah. Uh, Sean uh, had a bad experience, I guess, with Bob Armstrong. They worked out, of course, you know. But uh, he was down with some guys like me. And, uh, that happens sometimes, you know, that in the business is guilty by association. Right. Some of them had a problem with Cornette. We were coming from, you know, Smoky Mountain. They called it Smoky Mountain Clay. Guys I knew, you know, so, yeah, I mean, you know, uh, uh, it's, I guess it's how the ball bounces. Yeah. What was the reason you left with uh, WWE? A lot of, yeah. a lot of things. Well, I got let go. Let go. <laughs> I was actually uh, still, my contract was coming out. I, I was still doing some shows for them. and went to Kuwait with them, and I've done some shows for Paul e, Chris Candido, I mean him. Mm -hmm. oh, yeah. So he, uh, uh, my first night for them, uh, Chris, uh, I was going to be on some house shows, and Chris was doing the arena, and he said that he had me booked on the Saturday night. I had a Saturday day show with uh, WWF, I think it was called then, in New Haven, Connecticut. I rode to the arena with uh, Tammy, Sonny, mm -hmm. and, and met up with Chris, and uh, Shane Douglas and Chris and both of them in there. And uh, I, I knew them both for a long time. So Shane from Continental in the 80s, Chris from Smoky Mountain. And, uh, um, uh, New Haven, Connecticut, rode up with him. I was supposed to work Terry. Terry. Well, something happened with Lance Storm's plane flight. They said I had wrestled with Van Damme. He says, I could, I'd wrestle Rob when he was young. He's like 19. You know, I was like, okay, whatever y'all want me to do. It was different there in WWE, booking sheets, and I'll do everything on the fly. But I mean, mm -hmm. And then they said I was working with Taz, which I knew Taz when him and Chris came out and tried out and worked in Smoky Mountain a little bit. You know, and he worked in Tennessee, but I wasn't in Tennessee when he was there, but I was in Smoky Mountain. So, and they were pushing Taz big and lots of bringing guys, main guys in to get Taz over. They were getting ready to do their first pay per view. And that's why I thought, you know, I was there with Terry. He ended up with Brian Lee that night. Mm -hmm. uh, and they were getting ready for that pay per view. Terry took the belt off of Ray Bell, if you remember that. Yeah. And uh, so I wrestled Taz. Taz liked the match. And Paul Lee liked the match. And Paul said he beat me. And I was kind of finishing. I was still on. And then I. Uh, we get ready for the pay per view. I had a 10 day tour with WRB uh, in Saudi Arabia. And, uh, and, I, and I had 10 days, uh, not a 10 day tour, about a week. And then I had 10 days of house shows. I said, you want to do those, do those. And so I, I did that, came back, and that's when Tommy Dreamer put me with uh, Boyd Island after mm -hmm. that. You know, when you yeah. But, uh, Tommy Dreamer did that. Everybody put Tommy Rich with him. You know, so Is there still heat between uh, you and JBL, or is that? I don't know. Um, nine years ago, right. you know, I, you know, I don't know. Uh, I don't know what would happen if, if um, you know, I saw him. I really don't. Uh, I, I, I really don't. I, I guess it would just have to happen. But, uh, I mean, I'm way over it. I mean, he was sent word to me. Said that I sucker punched him, you know, and he hit me in the back of the head and did all that. And I thought, man, fuck you. you know? So I mouthed off, and then somebody got it on the mic or got it on the interview, put it out there, you know, and I was and I went, but you know what? It helped me a lot and got me booked overseas in Europe, United Kingdom, got out in Japan, and I, I was booked solid. I was a bit busy because I'd done the Hartford Homecoming and then the one night stand and then that. And I didn't want to say anything uh, because they said that WWE was going to open ECW back up. So I was getting all this on the interview after that happened. 
And, uh, you know, I didn't want to say nothing because I thought we didn't have a job. And I, I just got back from working full time. So I was glad to be there. And, uh, and uh, that's all I did. And, and uh, I think, though, in 2006 when they opened ECW up, uh, I didn't get a job. But I was still busy going overseas and, and, and was doing all right. You know, and they said because I, I used uh, that to uh, help myself. I did that because that's what you do. Mm -hmm. that's what do. Right. You know? What's been your worst injury? My whole body's injured. Uh, hey, hey, how you doing, guys? I'm Chase. All right, Tracy. I'm one of the trainees here. All right. I just wanted to get to talk to you and see if there's any tips that you have for helping the train. Right now I'm doing a podcast interview. Internet interview. But later. Okay. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. I'll get with you. How long have I been training? I've been training since January. All right. He's a referee. Same time frame. Gotcha. I, let me finish this. Yeah, appreciate that. Appreciate it. All right. That. All right. So, yeah, that was a long time ago. I, I really don't know what happened. He probably came out from that side. Whatever he wants to do. I'd rather not. But, right. Know, that's what he wants to do. With that. Now, I know you've been doing some work for D1W. He's very smart. I'm saying how he wrote a book. He's on a radio show. He's on Fox News. Mm -hmm. Married Girl. He's in Bermuda. He's on a great eight five on eight. I would hope he's not worried about me. Right. I'm delivering pizzas. <laughs> <laughs> it's all good. Go yeah, I know you've been doing some work with D1W over the last year. So yeah. Like, yeah. Um, yeah. What, what's your thoughts on the IWA Mid South and Ian Rod? Um, uh, Ian has done a lot of benefit shows and took it and gambled the money. And I know what he used to pay me, and I found out, hey, what's up? And, and found out what he was paying main guys that I was working with, stuff he did to Mickey Knuckles, which is crazy. I mean, whatever. And to tell you the truth, the one that really, a lot I didn't know the things that he'd done is uh, stuff Bull Paint. And we used to make trips up uh, 2011 to, uh, and Mickey, and uh, to, uh, Detroit with clowns and the same clown posse, the ICCP, the mm -hmm. JCW. You know, uh, Bull told me just so many things. I've had, I was working my job a lot and doing that show with those guys. I'd be half asleep and I was listening to him and Mickey. And, mm -hmm. God, I never knew all this. Uh, you know, he, he's, he's helped a lot of guys make it. He really has. And a lot of guys have come out there and made it. It's a who's who. And I worked for He always booked me, uh, added me on, you know, the card. I did everything. And whenever, you know, uh, I got uh, released as a trainer in uh, WWF out of Memphis and Belt Rental, uh, he was one of the first guys to call me. And every time I got fired, he called me as he knew before. So, you know. Some shows for D1W I was on, he uh, I tried to get them shut down, and I thought he took off work, so that pisses you off, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. and, or not took off work, I'd been book, and I worked that day actually, and I make better money at night at my job doing that, better tips and everything, so you know, you're a little aggravated about that. And just, it, 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 it. I mean, I've heard horror stories what he's done on, on benefit shows and sure. went and gambled it away. I know the, uh, another, another thing. And I'll shut up about him. And, and, uh, a show I watched in 2009 or 8. It was a benefit show for Mickey up around in Juliet, Illinois, or something like that. Um, I can't remember if it was there. But I, I, I did a hardcore match. And I don't really do that. I got a concussion out of it, juiced and bled like a stuffed hog. And, uh, I, you know, and, what, and, and did it to, to help Mickey with medical bills. But nothing went to the medical bills. He didn't do it to the same thing. Now, so, now D1W, they've treated they've treated me great. Rick Brady and Ron, uh, Tim Dennison, they've been nothing but cool. And I knew Rick when he first started in the business, and those guys are lawyers. Rick's studying to be a lawyer, and uh, I'm their champion. Uh, they got the, re the uh, uh, reunion show of uh, 
anniversary show is bringing the Teacher Center and the yeah, yeah. They've got their uh, own uh, training facility and home building and everything, so they're trying to build that. And, uh, they, yeah, they've treated me <laughs> nothing but great. Uh, 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 Tommy Dreamer there for them. Uh, of course, Hosea, uh, Tommy Norris, uh, uh, Lennox Norris. Um, can I post up on And uh, uh, Mitch Johnson. Gosh, uh, so well, a big boy. Uh, Kamala, Kamala, Joe Credit. Yeah, I know you're talking about Yeah, good kid. And uh, Tasha Dreamer, uh, Brian Christopher. You know, I guess he's been six man with Tito, Fondo, something like that. I'm doing Fondo's birthday bash for him, too, 25th. Cool. So they've treated me great. One of my favorite places. A good bunch of guys do eight off the room. Always a lot of fun. Any more than some high school had fun. Right. Uh, what was your first impressions of Paul Heyman? When you met him? I met him in 1987 when he, he just really started. Uh, Kevin Sullivan brought him in and he did an interview with this big, big guy. You know what I mean? uh, Tombstone. So big dude brought him out of water. He could talk real good. Paul, uh, Kevin liked him and gave him a break. You know, uh, he before that he was in Tennessee, and he was in on the uh, thing when they did that with Jerry Lawler last night on Tommy Woods. He hit on the green. Paul, he was in the band and, and, and was in that map. I want to say it's before that. I believe it was. And then he came to Florida, and then uh, and was around the Paulie again in uh, WCW. It's real, always real small, like Cornette, mm -hmm. you know, like a lot like Cornette, so similar to other heavy Yeah. One Southern guy, one New York guy, mm -hmm. you know. But two of the smartest guys that, you know, you know I ever worked for. And uh, Paul, I guess he still changed the business. Hard product, dangerous. But he had some great workers. Everybody's in that come through there. You know that. Eddie Guerrero, yeah, right, yeah. Chris Benoit, you know, he moved to all those guys. You can go on and on. Tommy Dreamer, Taz, the Dubbers. But he 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 uh, he could do he could write, make a card out ten minutes for the show on a napkin or something. He just come up with stuff. And, well, Jimmy was real laid out and well thought and way ahead. And, you know. I always thought that him and if him and Cornell, somebody ran something. They had those two guys running. If they could get along and kill each other, they could really be good. Yeah. Real good evaluators of talent. Made a lot of guys. Well, what were some of your favorite memories in the ECW ring? Uh, oh, it, it was a great atmosphere. It was real cool. Uh, the fans were so, they were so desperate. What made ECW and anybody that ever worked there say was the fans, was, was, was the people that paid a ticket to come there. They supported it. They were just chanting that EC Tubby back in the you know, days. And they, they just was just you get chills, you know, and, and, and everybody would guys would come from WWE that worked there and, and really uh, step their game because they were so motivated because Paul pep talks and yeah. you know, and he was just ready to go through a wall and it was a cool atmosphere, it really was, and it took nuts. Everybody was a misfit. So I fit right in, you know, and I knew a lot of guys there. What were your thoughts on the FBI gimmick? Did you like the thought of it? Yeah, I loved it. Uh, Tommy Dreamer came up with that. But when I done the first show with Taz, then I did the tour uh, to Kuwait, and, uh, and I did the 10 day show. I did a few more shows for them. I still got some shows with them. My second show with ECW, I, it was like 10 to 8. And Sabu was getting going to do pay per view with Taz, you know. And now I had all that leading into the pay per view. And um, I said, Dude, I wasn't used to that. You know, I, I didn't know who I was working with. I didn't know who I was working with. Yeah. But he, I think he threw me in. So, you know, I was hoping I was working, you know. And, and I said, Sabu, who am I working with? He's hung out of check. Jess Popper, was you want to work with him? He said, oh. And Sabu's like, no, no, no. He wanted to do something. He was doing something. Spike Dudley uh, to like, destroy Spike because mm -hmm. he has plain Spike. Except no, it was a heel. Was, it didn't matter who was heel there. For him pass, they killed each other. Yeah. But, uh, uh, you know, Taz trained Spike. So there was a storyline. He might have hurt Spike or something. That kind of thing. So 
Tommy Dreamer come over here and said, you got your red flag. So yeah. He said, I'm going to put you in a tag, you and Chris Chetty, against Tommy Rich and uh, Little Guido. He said, I don't want you to be able to get in the ring to finish and get the thing where I turned heel on Chris and went with Tommy and Guido. That's how. Okay. Tommy Dreamer. Yeah. Tom Green was another great man, pretty good. Good guy, always treated me good. He, he, he's a W, he's, he's, he did that, and I was there two and a half years. And uh, he got me on the one night stand. He said that was one night in 2005. Hardcore homecoming, Shane Douglas booked me in 2005. And uh, 2010, Tommy booked me on the, uh, the uh, Hardcore Justice TNA. So, yeah. Do you have a favorite match from ECW? That's hard. To say. There's a lot of them that I uh, involved in. Uh, it's really tough to say. Got to work with a lot of great teams. Got to work with Perry Sutton, John Thomas a couple of times. Uh, Dudley, Sun, not a lot. Pickles, uh, Axel Rock, and Balls for Home. The BWO, that was always yeah. fun with Meany and uh, Nova. <laughs> Uh, you know, it was a blast. Uh, uh, had some good single match with Lance Storm. I don't know when he was in the head. Yeah. And uh, uh, Scorpio with Sandman. We did a six man with Sandman, Tommy Dreamer, somebody else. I can't remember. Maybe the balls. And he was in the Scorp and Sandman did the guys. Works Spike Ugly and uh, Chris Chetty a lot. Uh, you know, uh, Danny Dorn, Low Kill. Uh, you know, there's so many of them, and, and uh, I would I would work out the ring with some of the guys uh, before the matches. You know what I mean? The trainer kind of thing. And, uh, uh, Chris Chetty was a great athlete. He hurt his hand. Taz has done done real good. He really was. Oh, it was a great bunch of guys. One of the favorite places I ever was. Rock I always look forward to. Tommy Rich, of course, with us. You know. Yeah. Guido was a great worker, great single wrestler, and uh, he was, you know, and, and great in the ring, great, real dedicated. I was getting older, and he really got me on diet, nutrition, and working out. Yeah. How did working in uh, JCW come about? Well, I knew uh, Shaggy and 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 uh, Robin J. Uh, when when we first started in the business, kind of through Sebo, you know, a little bit, you know, and uh, uh, they worked ECW and uh, were, were getting going big then, I mean, I'd say 96, 97, 97 maybe, and I can remember being on a plane with them, they was come from Detroit, and they come to Nashville, and I was on a flight with them, from down to Miami, or, where it was, or, or Tampa, or somewhere, and all they kept talking about was wrestling, and, and I was like, man, I don't keep up that kind of music, but I know who y'all are. Yeah. Why are you worried about rats? My son <laughs> loves y'all. Yeah. Well, my son Kyle, he's 24 now. He loves y'all. He's got all your stuff. That's how I know who you are. I hear it all the time. <laughs> Why are you worried about rats? They love the business. They couldn't relate to get all that stuff and take a big bunch. And uh, uh, they did. Sabu and Van Damme, and that Sabu Van Damme killed him. Mm -hmm. And uh, then when they got their promotion going, uh, I worked. I worked a gathering from 2007 to 2011, maybe a year, and did a lot of some of the tours and stuff. And at some points in there, I'm sorry, at my job, uh, I had to cancel because my job, you know, and, uh, you know, <coughs> was me needed at work, and I just, uh, but I, it's better with that now. But uh, you know, love work well. It's true to be good. <coughs> always paid for the, the, the gatherings experience yeah. anybody needs to go to that. Yeah. <laughs> crazy. Uh, Their crowds are nuts, man. I bet. God, they stick together. You fight one, you gotta fight them all. Yeah. They can say that. They juggle all the other three. Believe me, I know. Yeah. Two stuff for nothing, they cost them money. This building right here, they took the seats off of the chairs and threw them in the ring. 2007, man. It's good heat. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. In uh, 2010, you worked for TNA. Yeah. What was TNA like when you got there? Because I've heard a lot of bad stories about TNA. Was it uh, well, I was just there one day. 
mean, uh, Would you agree I'm working so hard? I, I guess Vince Russo was helping me. I, I don't know what Jeff was involved and I don't really know a lot about it. Because there's a lot of the old ECW guys and yeah. some of the guys that still work for TNA, of course. And I, and I don't, I don't know much what was going on. Uh, I, I thought it was weird that they just had no admission to the building and they threw a lot of guys in. So I lost the money, you know, and, and, and uh, hotels and everything. But then I guess that hardcore justice Tommy Green put together did one of their best buy rates at that time. And it was part of the way I think it's too bad that, that it don't seem like they have a direction like they should. Yeah. And we want to see the business do good for more jobs you know, for the guys. And uh, I think Hulk let it dry. I think King let it dry. Those two guys alone, I tell you, you talked a lot of money. Yeah. I mean, you could hire them. They aren't even getting in the ring, not doing house shows, nothing. Not supporting. I, I mean, they didn't. They, they should have been ambassadors like they're doing with Hulk Matt. Mm -hmm. you know, he never did that. He, he's first appearance has never mentioned King Hogan once. You don't see that in WWE, do you? It's the WWE's Hulk Hogan. John Cena the same way, right? Mm -hmm. WWE John yep. Cena. For me, I thought that he, what they're paying him the more he's there once a month. So, I think that hurt him a lot. I think that hurt them more than more. Really, a whole lot. They were doing better without him. Without they him. were. Better, better yeah. ratings, and I thought it was a lot better. And, and he held everybody back, I felt, so esteemed. Same way, stole money. Every year he's getting ready to go and work for Undertaker. Mm -hmm. You know, year and he take off three, four year. months for about five years and he gets a million dollar contract. Yeah. All right? You're right. He's working about <laughs> three times a year and getting ready. Am I right? You're right, man. All that money and how many young guys out here in our business were killed with the money? We're talking about with Bischoff, too. What did he do? Yeah. We're talking about some of these guys. At one time they had Kevin Nash, Sting, Hulk. Uh, Booker would get in the ring. He worked every night. Uh, Jeff Jarrett, he would too, but then whatever happened to Kurt and all that. Kurt Angle, all these guys, hardly working house shows, nothing. You're talking about three, four, five million dollars. Bischoff, Russo, all those guys. I don't know what the Russo and Bischoff was making. Russo would try. I, mean, I, he, I thought he was real creative. I mean, just what I think, you know, for real creative. I always thought that he, he had a, like a, a real wrestling guy with him. And, and, I, and I think. Now, what I know of it, you know, is this. Also, Vince, uh, great creative idea. Not, sometimes guys work together as a team, and what I think is, I guess, his body of work. His biggest success, I thought, was with FDR. You know, you know, yeah. Very smart. But they worked together good, and they made their ideas good. Mm -hmm. and they, they, were, they did the attitude. Yeah. Pretty much, right? Yeah, I mean, right. pretty much Steve Austin, The Rock, yeah. am I right? right? So, I mean, you know. People knock him and say this and that, dude, but I mean, some, it, it's like in the day, you would always hear about Dusty Rhodes. But he always worked better with J.J. Dillon because he was more detailed. Bob Armstrong would tell you he had good ideas, but Ron Thor, he worked better and he booked and did because Bob had to be real was creative. Ron was real detailed. You got to have, does that make sense? Yeah, it does. Paul would do a lot by himself, and, and I felt like he could have, if he had a guy, or well, Tommy Dreamer was kind of his guy with that. You know, and with Cornette, you know, the same yeah. way. Uh, you know, two heads are better than one. So. I don't want to trash anybody. I, 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 right. I did all that. Yeah. I'm too old. But I just try to tell how it is. Yeah. yeah. One thing they have in common, we all love the business. Does mm -hmm. that make sense? Yeah. You know, try to get over it. I'm going to name some guys off to you. I know Vince Russo. I'd always heard Vince Russo. I didn't like selling guys. I'm sorry, Vince. <laughs> But he was always alright to me, you know, right. he was a magazine guy, I did. Yeah. I'd always see him talking to Sean, he always did, was right, you know what I mean, mm -hmm. real, uh, I guess you said fresh mind. Yeah. You know what I mean? I'm going to name some guys off to you, and you just tell me what you think about them. Uh, the first one is Terry Taylor. He gave me my first full-time job in the business, Bill Dundee and Terry Taylor. Terry was booking in Louisiana, uh, 83 to 86, I was part-time. Loading trucks when I was young, I had cars, and Bill come back, I'd see Bill in the gym. I knew Bill Dundee since I was in the ninth grade, I'd see him at the gym. And, and, and I got in the business, and, and uh, he was booking the old Mid-South, and then he came back, so I tell you about the book, and uh, uh, Billy Tra uh, uh, 
by Bill Arkansas. Uh, Bill come in and says, I talked to Bill Watts today. He wants you, you, and you. He wanted Coco Ware, Billy Travis, God bless all the men. I said, I'll go now because the local guy back in, we want to we'll give you a few bookings. We can to keep the job. He had to leave to uh, get a full time job. Terry Taylor gave me my first full time job in business. He was always good to me. He taught me a lot. Drove in the car with him for the first year. Scared me to death. He was driving like a maniac. But he had a great knowledge about what we do. And uh, he was booking it. And uh, so I was working, you know, and, and, and I was there about seven, eight, nine months. Learned a lot. Learned a lot. And he's been around him a lot since then. And I haven't seen him in years. And God bless his wife. I wish he passed a few years ago. So. I know we talked about her at the cauliflower ear folks when I said it. Mm -hmm. uh, so. God bless you. She's a good lady. Trudy. Ricky Morton. Taught, you know, taught me a lot. Known him since 1983 and learned so much. Uh, worked a lot of different places, companies with him, traveled with him, known him forever. Love him. Crazy. Still out there doing it. He's about 58 years old. He's still, still busy, still going. Yeah. He's still making money, doing good. He's everywhere. I always tell him, he don't get on there now. I tell him wherever I'm talking to him. Ricky's everywhere. You don't age, Dick Clark's yeah. breath. Yeah. <laughs> Robert took him, Robert, still going. And well, that bought one a lot. Helped me a lot. Knew how to draw. Those guys know how to draw money. Yeah. Steve Austin. I worked with him in Atlanta a few times in WWI. I worked with Steve. Uh, when Brett was getting ready to come in and work with him, and when he talked about Brett on the mic, Brett was super old, getting ready to come back. Boy, he just knew he was going to go. Man. Yeah. <laughs> what about Tom Pritchard? Yeah, I, one of the greatest trainers ever. He trained Rock, trained, uh, uh, trained uh, John Cena. Uh, he was Steve Austin, one of his partners when he was in the USWA in Texas a little bit. And, uh, has put out so many of them you see on them, you know. And, uh, you know, uh, if, if I had a, if I had a, uh, I'll tell you this, if, if I had a, a wrestling company and wanted to make it go, and guys that are not locked in already, the ones that are out there, I would want Jim Cornette and Tom Pritchard. That's who I would want. Because that's the one that's talking about Jimmy, real creative, Tom over the doctor. Tom handled the boys, Tom and Tom, and, 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 and uh, I, I want those two guys. They're very smart. You know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. Uh, if, if, you know, uh, that'd be a good choice. There's a lot of them. Kevin Sullivan's another. Kevin Sullivan's a great mind. He put the gimmick on Steve and I, the Wild Eyes Sullivan. Uh, what a mind for the business. So, so many. I don't, I'm forgetting. Roger Smith, who, who was an assassin, one of the original assassins in Dirty Roads, in turn. Assassins, uh, Fire and Flame. He gave me my break in the business. Uh, I love you all. Thank you. Nick Fonda. Very much. I uh, knew him when he first started. He worked in Tennessee. He worked in Independence and the Shane train together. And uh, he came down to Continental and finished up. He worked twice a night to get juice to make more money. And he's got a lot of business, hungry, crazy. Nobody was doing it. He, he, he went to shoot him into the chairs in Dalton, Alabama. He went to shoot me, he said reverse it, and I shot, shot him in the chair, and he did the upside down flip, he took out about three rows of rings. Back in 1988, not many guys would do right. that, you know. Right. And look what he's come on to, you know, I was around him in Japan before he got his big break, and he worked WCW, of course, and, and uh, before he went and worked with Undertaker. You know, yeah. You know, uh, the last one is Tommy Rich. I grew up watching Tom. We learned a lot from him. We to, him, Ricky Morton, one of the greatest baby faces of all time. You know, and, uh, uh, traveled him a lot, around him a lot. A lot of times, crazy. He's doing good now. I heard he's cleaned up and, and uh, uh, he's uh, uh, going to church. And, and he's, he's, he's really, really doing good. You know, so. But uh, learned a lot from him. He's another one who knew how to draw money and, and uh, crazy, God, so funny. But. Uh, very knowledgeable. Sometimes you know, around guys, some of these guys are talking about pick their brain. It's, they, uh, it's handed down. You know, they, uh, Out of uh, WCW, WWE, 
the ECW. Which company did you have the most fun in? I had fun in all of them. I really did. All of them. I really did. Different experiences and different, you know, yeah. and, and, and good and bad and, not, and, not, and anything but not. The good way out base, the bad. I guess say WWE is like more corporate structure. So it's, it's like WCW. Yeah. You, know, so, you, know, you had to really be more professional. Yeah. You know, you know, try to be. Right. <laughs> try to be. Did you ever have a, you got a favorite manager? Uh, Sherry Martell. Sherry Martell. Mar well, that ever managed me. Jim Cornette did it a few times too, but I mean, Sherry, Jimmy brought her in on a loop. Uh, I was get, I broke my ankle, and I, I kept, I didn't let nobody know. I, I, I broke my ankle in the ring, wrestling Brian Lee, and I, I, mean, I was like doing a little isometric in the car, rehabbing it on my own. I spent 20 minutes on an hour off, and uh, I couldn't help and, and it was, I mean, I had two braces on her, like, they just said elephantitis. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and Sherry has a baby face out there with me with uh, Sonny. She was Tammy Stitch then, mm -hmm. Brian Lee. And uh, I did two weeks or so with her, with her out there with me, about three or four nights a week. And then I ended up, you know, made it to, got into Japan with that. But Sherry Martell knew how to play off of you and, uh, you know, and, 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 and really did. She really did. There's been a bunch of others. I, I don't want to leave nobody out of this thing. Right. You know, uh, like I said, Cornette. Uh, I saw Bob Armstrong in the corner. You know, so he helped me a lot. He showed me a lot. Uh, What's your thoughts on hardcore wrestling? Uh, it's been around forever, but used to it would, it would build to that. And, uh, some places you see a lot of matches with that. If every match is a hardcore match, you don't need them. Mm -hmm. And if every match is just a wrestling match, you don't need them. You know, but, but I think any show, you got to have a little bit of everything on the show. It's like a restaurant mm -hmm. type of food. Certain people like different things. They like the variety. Right. The girls, they like the, the gimmick guys. Yeah. They like the, the, the pure wrestlers. They like the high flyers. They like the hardcore guys. You know what I mean? Tag teams yeah. and, and, and midgets, you know, and... and, and Everybody has a right to what they pay a ticket for. Okay. So. What do you think is the biggest problem with the Indies today? I think really it is that they bash each other and try to destroy each other's show and it hurts the business. And we all love the business and we all have a, a, that common thing that we love. We all love it. We really do. And, uh, you know, when you're jerking posters down, standing there running, and calling health departments and yeah. fire marshals and whatever else they do, you know, and, uh, and run the same night right down the road from each other and, you know, fussing and fighting. And, and if you were a fan coming in to watch it, would you want to be around all that negativity? You go to get away from it. Right. You go to, go to, you know, get your yeah. frustrated and have fun. And uh, you don't want to get mixed up. You got enough drama at your own job, your own life, and all you know, so I think that hurts a lot. Plus, some uh, uh, that aren't uh, properly trained, proper gear, you know. I mean, I know there's gimmick guys, you know, things like that. Not so much, but uh, you know, and it was companies. It was uh, you got a check, you got a booking sheet, you pay taxes on the W two, you know, and now it's a lot of independence and, and, and uh, some that shouldn't be running shows, you know, yeah. that hurt the business. Yeah. Is there any guys from uh, like the WWE or TNA that you like to enjoy watching today? Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, it's good to see Daniel Bryan. Uh, I was trainer down in Memphis when him and uh, Lance Cave has passed away now. And Brian Kendrick, he's spanky. And of course, good to see him doing good. And uh, I miss seeing Punk on there. Uh, I got to work with him a lot when he started. Uh, you know, uh, uh, there's a bunch of them. That Roman Reigns, I think, is going to be the next big thing, you know. Yeah. And, uh, 
much in shape. You know, and, uh, that rush, big Russian guy is doing good. Uh, and there's a lot of them, boy, that are just big, strong guys are studs and they're agents that they have there. When you got Arn Anderson, you got Mike Rotunda, you got Dean Malenko, you got Johnny Ace, you got a uh, Road Dog, you got Billy Gunn, the agent Joey Mercury, you know, uh, that, that, that set up, help coordinate their matches. Fit family, you know, they they're gonna they're gonna put a lot into it because they know what they're doing. Believe me, you know, and uh, of course Triple H, you know, and, and uh, Steve Regal, you know, yeah. and. Uh, they, they, they're going to develop guys, and that performance center they got is just out of this world. Uh, you know, uh, uh, Seth Rollins, I knew him as Tyler Black. Uh, and, uh, I knew I was uh, tagged some with, uh, in Europe with uh, uh, Seamus and was with uh, Drew McIntyre, and they're all doing good. and been there a while, and, and it's cool. Uh, Bobby Brookside is there as a trainer now, and uh, Nick Ben's going to you know, as a trainer. And, uh, so you, you can't go wrong. Guys like that help you, you know, and uh, they, they take it, they, they know how to teach them. And they're all great athletes, but they, they, they teach them to become workers. Yeah. Um, I think maybe if the guys are trying to remember out some promos, it's hard. Give them the points to lay out if they have down script writers or uh, um, days of our lives or whatever, you know what I mean? You know, Hard if you see some of that kind of robotic, some of that sense yeah. of the uh, Some work, not everybody, you know, not all the time. What was it like wrestling the bear? Crazy. Cool. <laughs> I wrestled three different bears. Wow. That one was on YouTube. It was 550 pounds, 10 months old. Mm -hmm. Ginger, in 80, that was in 89. Ginger in 83, was 750 pound black bear. And another, I can't remember his name, Nick Adams on his seven foot, two thousand pounds in '86. So yeah, that was, uh, that was experience. <laughs> okay, Why walk around like I do now? Yeah. <laughs> what do you enjoy most about the business? Everything: traveling, preparing, working out, getting ready to do it in the dressing room, in the ring, at the autograph table. You know, uh, every bit of it. Gets in your blood. You know, I started in 1983, 83 to 86. I did it part time, 86 to 2002 full time, and I went back full time at it. 2005 to about 2009, and now some here and there, you know, doing kind of get head back in it, do a little more, you know. But uh, it's, uh, it, it's it's a rough business. It's brutal. And, uh, so many guys have passed away. A lot of things in my own town. It's so sad. still be able to somehow pull it. Yeah. Here at the Coliseum, nearly 90 years wrestling's been on here. 80 by a team last year. Gorgeous, Joel, the original. Yeah. All that. When you, when you finally retire and you walk away from the business, how do you want to be remembered? Uh, that I tried to help guys learn how to do it. I love doing that. Got to be around guys that had the talent. Uh, and try to just guide, help, and teach, you know, and, and, and uh, pass it down. And, uh, hey, what's up? Uh, all right. You out there tonight? No, I'm back just to all the graph. I'm, I, I'm not wrestling. Not wrestling. But, uh, yeah, you know, things like when we remember these guys try to help everybody. Uh, hey, yeah. hey. Learn, you know, because you never quit learning. You just quit learning. You quit. I wish I knew what I forgot. <laughs> Well, Tracy, man, I appreciate you doing this interview, yeah, thank man. You. It means a lot, you. brother. All the beer, Judy. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks again, man. Yeah, go enjoy it.